Okay, so I'm seeing a few people on the right track. Just a quick note for yourself. Um, we already know within this topic that there's lots of derivatives flying around, okay? And um, even in related rates, we're looking at all kinds of different ones. I find it helpful to write for myself here that velocity is dx on dt and then go ahead and work it out. Because as you'll see later on, it becomes crucially important that we can differentiate with respect to different variables. Just like we saw with related rates and balloons, there's the radius, there's the area, all those different kinds of things. So can someone state for me their derivative? What did you begin with? 10 pi? 10 pi cos? Pi on 12. T. Fantastic. So you've just used chain rule once, okay? Do remember sine goes to cosine. You're focusing on so many things, it's really easy to make a sine error here. Sorry, a plus minus error here because you forget, am I differentiating? Am I integrating? Which one am I doing? Okay, so this looks good. How can I read the maximum speed off this? Yeah, so the maximum speed comes from the amplitude of the velocity function, right? The further that the velocity function is away from v equals zero, the faster that you are going in either direction, okay? Um, why can't you ask about maximum velocity? Or why don't they ask about maximum velocity, really? You know, think about it? What do you reckon, Declan? Different directions. So since, yeah, velocity has direction in mind, right? I suppose if someone asks for maximum, the positive one would be the only one that makes sense. But really, speed is the only one that's really interesting. And in either direction, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to say 10 pi. I'm not quite done having done that. Because the speed, of course, has to have units attached to it. What is this? Kilometers per hour? No, it's meters per second. And where did you get that from in the question? It, yeah, it came from them giving you the amplitude in meters and the period in seconds. So this is meters per second, right? Happy. So now in part B, they're going to ask us to use these equations to solve for particular parts of when those are equal to particular values. What is the first time when it is 30 meters to the right of the origin and to the left of the origin? Okay, now. Before I, I march you off to actually have a go at these, right? Let's interpret what equations will I write down and then subsequently solve with these to actually take all those words and get something meaningful out of it, right? Displacement being 30 meters, 30 meters to the right of the origin. So if it's displacement, which of these two equations do I care about? Displacement, it's the top one, right? That's the first one I wrote down. So I'm going to solve for x being 30 meters to the I don't like this because it says forwards and backwards and then it says left and right. Jerks. Anyway, maybe they edited it. They're saying to the right first. So do you think that is the positive direction for x or the negative direction? Most usually is the positive direction. To be honest, you can define it however you like, but let's define it as the positive one because it's nice and easy to begin with. So I'm going to be solving for positive 30. Okay? And when you have a go at part two, what's the difference? Because it's still 30, right? But what will be the different equation I write to get me a different answer for time? I'm still going to be solving for x, but it's x equals negative 30, right? So you've got your equation up here. Solve it once for x equals 30. You want the first time. So remember, this is oscillating up and down. It's going to be at that position an infinite number of times. But you want the first one, OK? So why don't you have a crack at both? See what you get out of your equations if you have a value for time. Course over and we'll have a look and see if you're on the right track. Radio, so uh, I, I want to sort of give you a bit of a nudge in the right direction. So let's see if we can help each other out here. And what I've done here, you can see in my working, all I've done is I've taken what you told me to do, I'm solving for when x equals 30, for when displacement is 30. Here is my displacement equation from part A, okay, that you helped me work out. And I've go, gone ahead and I've let it equal 30 and then seen what happened. Okay? Now I then get to this point. What are we trying to find? It's a time that we're after, right? What's the first time? So this t is what I'm really trying to dig into, right? So at this point, I have no choice. I have to do something violent to this equation to get t out of these brackets. What am I going to have to do? It's tucked inside a sign at the moment, right? So what way are you going to get rid of that sign? You're going to use the inverse. Now, it's tempting to write this like so. okay? But you kind of have to be careful here, because 
this is why we spent so long on it as a topic, right? Inverse functions are not just very simply the opposite of their functions that they came from, right? This guy over here, this line rather, has an infinite number of solutions, yeah? This one only has one solution. We restricted the domain for that express purpose of making it a function, not a relation, right? So the, the line we've written here is ever so slightly different to the one you have here, and you have to be careful with it, okay? Now, how many of you wrote down this line? Hands up? Yeah, okay, the vast majority, that's fine. Now, when you do this, you get, you know, there's a number that's gonna come out from this, and I could say, well, I actually don't want pi on 12 t, I just want t, so you could, Multiply both sides by 12 on pi, and that would give you this, like so. Okay, now I saw this on a lot of people's pages, and I said, how confident are you that the answer is what it is, that that's the answer? And very few of you gave me a, anything more than a, uh, maybe, okay? Now, that's okay to have that and not be sure it's the answer, but I want to do better than that. I want to actually know, is this reasonable or not? Okay, so if you haven't already reached for your calculator, okay, the question did not ask you to do this, but I have no idea what this number is. I don't know my sine inverses very well off the top of my head, especially not for a number like that, okay? And when you multiply by 12 on pi, I'm completely out to see. But to work out whether this is a sensible answer, I do need to work out what this is, okay? So you have your calculator there. Has someone got a number on this? 0.96? Dot, 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 okay. Now, does this make sense as an answer? Hmm, still, I'm still iffy about it, right? Now, for starters, what units is this in? What units do you think this is in? This is a time, and earlier here I stated that I was in seconds, right? So I'm guessing this is in seconds. Question mark, okay. Now. Earlier on, I drew the graph over here. It's a very, very rough one. Okay, I'm going to encourage you, if you haven't already, to do so now. Um, they don't ask you to draw a graph, but we know how useful graphs are in sort of interpreting what's happening. Now, how do I use this graph to sense whether this is a reasonable answer or not? Okay, well, this graph has this equation. And I wrote that equation on the basis of some information that they gave me, right? So the period is 24 seconds. Where is 24 seconds on this graph? Where is it if the period is 24 seconds? Hmm. Where should I write it? Where are you pointing, Finner? At the end. Which end? Can you be a little more specific? At the end of the sine curve. At the end of the sine curve. I, I'm guessing this is what you mean. Yeah? Good guess. Yes, no, that was the correct answer. Okay, great. So that is the right spot. This is the time axis, after all. Um, I also have 120. Where does that belong on this graph? To be a little more specific now. Yeah, thank you. Oh, hold on. It's on the vertical axis, which we usually call y, right? So I'll, I'll pay that. There we go. But of course, in this instance, it's actually not. It's not the y-axis in this case, is it? It's the x-axis. Very good. So there's 120. And we're trying to find when x equals 30 for the first time. Where is that? Well, if this is 120, right? Then a 30 will be like a, a quarter of the way up to that. So if that's 60, then that will be 30. Right there, okay? Now, if that's 24 seconds, what's half time? There. Half of the period should be 12 seconds, right? Now you tell me, I hand drew this graph. I didn't have any template, nothing. I just sort of, whee, there we go. Does it look like a reasonable sine curve to you? I think it's okay, it's not my best work, but it'll, it'll do, right? Now, there's 30. Do you think that looks anything like 0.965? I think it looks pretty all right, to be honest. Right? Keeping in mind that that's 12, so like, yeah, one, one tenth, one twelfth of that, I'm pretty happy with it, okay? Now, it's really important that you go through this process of thinking, does this answer make sense or not? Because it doesn't necessarily look like it does, okay? But I can use this to then answer the next question if I understand it correctly, 